is going on you guys welcome to today's video uh, welcome to this channel if this is the first time um, that you are visiting this channel if you want to actively live passively through the ATM uh, industry and obviously if you want to have an ATM in your business that is what we're here for wanting to provide you guys with a lot of useful tips, insights, uh, insights, tricks, and avoid a lot of problems that you might otherwise run into by yourself without our advice and expertise. So, welcome. Um, yes, I'm not, yes, I know it's been a while since I had done the last video. I've been doing a little bit of a career change lately and trying to get adjusted with a new job, etc. And I think that brings up a really good point before I even go into what today's topic is, is that is the whole point of entrepreneurship. A lot of people that I know, the ATM business is their side hustle. It's not their main hustle. And it takes a while to work up to that. So yes, I have a day job. Yes, my business partner has a day job as well. Yes, we put all of our free time into this side business to grow it and get better with it. So just remember, Rome was not built in a day. It's, it's not gonna take you one day to get to where you wanna be with this, okay? So that is why I haven't done a video in a little while, but I'm in the glamorous office and want to do a shorter video today, which is gonna be about location. So I have a few different um, ideas and notes and stuff on my phone. So let's dive into it. Okay, you guys, so locations. This is probably one of the biggest factors for having a sustainable ATM business. Um, locations are gonna be huge. We start off with some locations that were slower and that's part of it as well, is you're gonna have to test out a lot of these different locations. First point is there are some proven locations though and I'll get into those. So first would be, uh, well I'll just kinda go through the list. Bars are always big. Um, anywhere there's alcohol, people are spending a lot of money. People want cash to have a limit to spend, etc. Bars, barber shops, um, cash only barber shops actually. Diners, cash only diners, cash only nail salons or nail parlors. So there's a few different locations that have been proven, dispensaries, um, clubs, strip clubs, things like that where cash is essential, cash is needed, cash is wanted, and there's a bigger need for it. Those are gonna be some of the best locations that you can find. And this is something that I'll do videos on a lot, probably um, every now and again, because it's so big and it can kind of make and break your business, honestly. So the best way to find them, use the Google machine. <laughs> you have internet 24 seven. And if you use a flip phone still, someone you know has a phone with internet 24 seven. So um, YouTube, Google, stopping by a lot of places that I found were, I was driving by on just on, you know, the main street or main highway and I would see tattoo shops and barber shops and different nail salons and I would call them up. Um, I actually put together a list when we were first starting out of about a hundred hotels, which I didn't mention before, but um, hotels are a good market as well. And I spent my entire Saturday afternoon and I called about a hundred hotels um, in a day and was highlighting the ones that said yes, the ones that have one already, and people that had one but they were open to hearing about it, so I would send them an email, all that. Prospecting, that's gonna be huge for locations, and it can take time as well. Um, we've been in contact with an owner for about three and a half months now because he submitted our contract up to his management, up to the corporate chain, all of that, which can take a while. Um, so don't bank on a location coming in, don't bank on landing a location and securing it overnight. One of the hotels that we're in actually is a Holiday Inn and it actually was overnight. I called her on a Tuesday afternoon. She said, oh, I'll think about it. I said, hey, you know, this is Spencer with Absolute ATMs. Uh, if you ever get to putting an ATM in there? She said, no. We have a lot of people who ask for cash though. It was really interesting because the next day she called me back, surprisingly, and said, hey, we want to have an ATM, when can you come install it? And we came and installed it that weekend. So sometimes it does happen that way. Um, oftentimes it does not happen that way. So I do want to tell you that right now. Cold emailing, cold calling is gonna be your best bet whenever you have time. Honestly, it's just a good way to get your name out there. If they say no, we already have one, it never hurts to ask, do you know anybody who would 
have a need for one or obviously keep our contact information. We'll let you know if anything changes down the road. Uh, I'll reach out. I'll reach out to you next year, excuse me. Just all of that. It just takes time to go and prospect and call and, and dial and email uh, to find the right locations. Our other location that has been pretty big is a CBD shop that honestly we just walked in and it was next to Smith's and we just said, hey, you know, have you ever considered having an ATM there? He has a square card processor uh, and he said, honestly, no, I never thought about that. He's kind of unsure, like, uh, you know, maybe that's that sounds kind of risky, whatever. So we talked to him about it. Uh, said we'd come install it. It's no liability for you. This is our revenue share, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, it, you know, ended up being consistently right now one of our probably best locations. And so that's just how it works. And he has a brother who owns a CBD shop as well, 20 miles down the road, which, you know, we might connect with here in a couple months. So you never know, you never know who they know, you never know uh, what they got going on. So it never hurts to go and, never hurts to go and ask them. And a lot of ATM gurus out there will attest that that is probably a main way that they find their business as well. Prospecting, walking in, talking to owners, introducing themselves, bringing your shirt with you, you know, to and from work, in case you need to stop in, talk to people, all of that, so. Another way you can find locations is routes. I typically, and people, <laughs> some people think routes are awesome, some people think routes are trash. Um, I'll go into that in another video, I'm not gonna get into that, because uh, there's kind of some other factors that go into that. If you're first starting out, don't even think about doing a route, put in the groundwork, you know, go and, and hit the streets hard, so to speak, and do the due diligence to find a location that's gonna work and that you can have, be proud of that you found as your first location, so. Also, I will note, before I wrap this up, don't overbook yourself, don't, if you're in a position where you're first starting out and you can only afford to buy one machine and stock it up, let's say you have, you know, only three and a half thousand dollars lying around to go buy a machine, stock it up, uh, that's kinda all you have, don't go out and, and overbook and you know, tell all these people, hey, we'll put a machine in there, we'll put a machine in there, you, 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 and you, hotel, bar, barbershop, nail salon, tattoo, just because you're gonna end up making yourself look bad and you're gonna be turning these people down and they might not wanna do business with you in the future. So, they have a big need, obviously be strategic about the way you are prospecting and planning and talking to them if you only have one machine. If you're a big baller and you bought 30 machines and you're trying to get them placed, yes, go and do that. But if you're first starting out, which is for most of the people who are watching this, um, or you're still on your way, don't overbook yourself. Make sure that you are not over-promising and under-delivering. Um, you want to do the opposite. You want to, if anything, under-promise and over-deliver. So don't overbook yourself with locations as well. Just something to be mindful of. That is kind of all I have for you guys. Um, I always say they're gonna be shorter videos and they end up being a little bit longer. But if you got a lot of value um, and you like this, please hit subscribe, please hit like, please share this, watch it again and again and again and again. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, reach out to me if you have any questions, drop a comment, share. Ah! It's gonna be awesome. Um, I have another video next week which are gonna be about uh, events, which are gonna be a little bit of the logistics around events which I know a lot of you have been asking for. So stay tuned for that. Um, keep putting in the hard work.